What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're gonna be taking a look at USC Counterforce, which is a game that is going into early access very shortly. And so if you've never seen this game before, it's the sequel to another game called USC. I never got around to playing that one, never heard of it before this game released. And so unfortunately don't know too much about it, but this one right here is a squad based strategy game where you take a little team of Marines down into random procedurally generated missions with various equipment and outfits and guns and bombs and explosives and all that kind of fun stuff that gets my video parsed by the sensors. And of course you go down to annihilate Z Morphs. And so today we're going to be taking a look at the game for about 25 minutes and seeing if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this you wanted to end up getting the game for yourself, you are more than welcome to do that. And I will have a link for you down below in the description. Be forewarned though, as far as early accesses go, I think this is actually very much on the earlier end of early access and it's going to need to chunk up some serious content density before it's ready to roll just from what I've seen in my two or three hours of playing the game so far, but we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it. We're gonna have a good time. In addition to the link that you can find down below in the description, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live on any given day of the week. God, I hope there's no aliens down that south corridor. That's really gonna suck. Uh, do you have... So what are we doing right now? Like, what is the point of this mission my Marines are currently on? Well, my Marines are currently on kind of like a Hitman mission right now to kill off some kind of big bad boss baddie alien down in the depths of this facility. We fought our way across the surface. It went reasonably well. And now we're down underneath the surface having recovered some sort of like Wayland yutani technology as a bonus objective. And now we gotta complete the assassination and then get out of here so that the facility will be deemed safe from the alien menace. Unfortunately, we have a decision in front of us. We gotta decide if we're going like forwards or if we're going downwards. Yeah, that's probably not great. You can hold position right there. What if you face down that way? That's not really gonna work, is it? Okay, well I'm gonna take you off defensive mode then. I'm gonna walk you back over here. We're gonna spin you around and have you defend from right there. You don't have any AP left, so it doesn't matter what you wanna do. Technically I can get these guys into the room and start firing at that thing right there. It's an acid spitter. Uh, this game is very heavily inspired. Actually, what I think the game is going for, so I was going to talk briefly about how the game is inspired by XCOM, and the game is inspired by Xenonauts, and the game is inspired by stuff like that, but honestly, what I actually think this game is inspired by is Space Hulk, as you can see from the helmet camera over there. Uh, when you get into the actual mud with some of these aliens, it can get pretty intense. Oh no, my man got no reloads. I do have some grenades, but I'd prefer to hold on to them for a little while before I do anything too crazy. Ooh, nice little crit right there. I'll take that. Just keep firing, man. If you can kill the damn thing, kill the damn thing. The downside is we got a pressurized barrel right there, which is kind of an issue. We're also ending our turn kind of like on doorways, and this is a bit of a sweep and clear. Now, luckily, this is one of the missions that doesn't have a time limit. A lot of the missions in this game, from what I've noticed and I've played around thus far, have a time limit. And so we can kind of play this one at our own pace if we desire to do so. But be forewarned that if you're the kind of player that does not like time limits inside of your strategy games, this game frequently, I would say a large chunk of the time, this game has like a 25 turn limit or like a 15 turn limit or something like that where you've got to get the mission done. I've found that you can pretty safely complete most of the missions with like six or seven turns remaining, even playing kind of slow. But I will say that just the knowledge of the fact that there is a timer has changed the way that I choose to play the game going forward and has made me make some tactical decisions that I don't think I would have made otherwise if there had not been a timer there. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Wow, these guys are schmoovin', dude. Okay, yeah, we apparently popped the cork on something nasty over here. Is it gonna be my turn soon? Oh yeah, dude, they're piled up in here. Now the good news is uh, there are really no What's happening? Oh, it wouldn't let me take my turn for a second. There are no attacks of opportunity, so we can actually get ourselves out of this situation. It's not quite as bad as it looks, and in fact, I'm going to get myself out of this situation, like right now. 
I may. I see an opportunity right here, though. Let's bomb this out. Yeah, I was going to say, if you can just huck some grenades into that situation right there and maybe shred some armor and save us a little bit of headache and terror, I think we'll be all right. Uh, we do need to cure some bleeds on people. I've got a minigun right here. Minigunner will probably be able to do something. Unfortunately, we're really cramped right now. So the amount of guns that I can actually bring to bear against these aliens is going to be limited in a couple of ways. Is that... That's a rejuvenating reaper. All right, move up to here. This is kind of like a risky move. But... Oh, a graze. Beautiful. I need, like, serious minigun fire on this nerd right here. Are you out of AP? Out of ammo. Okay. Also out of AP once out of ammo. Great. Fantastic. Over here we have a sniper rifle. I'll probably... Sniper... Not quite as useful in this enclosed environment. And we just fired a whole bunch of grazes. Okay, he's down. What does that leave me with? Like, the smallest amount of AP ever. Let me... I've got SMG guy right here. He's my technician. I may need him to get into doors and things here today. So putting him in direct risk of getting murdered might not be the best idea. However, it does look like I was able to kind of unleash some mayhem right there, and now he can dance out of the room, possibly. Mercy's my medic. Do these remove bleeding? Yeah. So my medic is going to have to come in here, get rid of that bleed, get rid of that bleed right there. Medic, tell me you got something you can do for me here. I think, oh man, there's so many bugs in here, dude. This is actually like super bad. There's 40 more aliens in here too. Man, I don't even know if we're gonna have the ammo to deal with this situation. I brought one stack of ammo on each character, but like I may have under prepped. This is kind of like my first time into the fray here. And so I'm like, eh, uh, the guns in this game, they have really, really weird grids that they can fire on, by the way. Uh, so this game, oh, there's another one over there too. Damn, okay. You first. And then... Who do I have left that has things they can do? Adam's still good to go. So my suggestion would be... This is going to get messy. There's not a whole lot of things I can do here to bail us out of this situation. But this is a great time to make a video because you guys came in like right when things were getting really tense and really gnarly. The first mission was kind of a breeze. So like I went through the first part of this and basically hardly took any damage at all and like skated right on through. If the enemy hadn't had like ridiculous movement, I don't think they would have accomplished anything at all. However, what's up with the nest? How hard is that to get rid of? It is a nest gland. Okay, so we probably want to wipe that out then. That's probably like our guy. I would say let's do a defensive Holding southwards. Position. Just shoot anything that moves. You don't have any AP left, but face that way and step because I need Adam to come over here. Adam is also going to look down this way, reload, and then go to overwatch mode and just use all that leftover AP to blap anything that looks at you wrong. Just take it out. Now, each of these missions, the game as of right now does not have a campaign. That's going to be my one big complaint about it. There are only like two and three series of missions that you can do that are completely and totally randomized, and then on top of that, you can do like a customized mission that you can play on your own. And so what I mean by that is you can take a single mission in a vacuum and you can decide what the objective is, how many squads you're going in with, you know, what the enemy op for is going to be. And so there is some customizability and some stuff to do here, but I think that if you're looking for long-term progression in a game that will allow you to sort of do like a 25-mission campaign where you're doing the Xenonauts thing and your guys slowly develop and you're adding new equipment to them and stuff like that, uh, may not be the time to get into the game. I'll take that, anything that softens them up. Although I probably could have thrown a grenade right there and been just as effective. Now what's gonna really suck is if they make it through this door over here. That's what I'm really concerned about, but we're all out of APs. This game functions on a AP system. It's really more like a TU system in all honesty. Yeah, it looks like they're breaking through something over there. There's like a leech or something right there. 
Oh, there's multiple leeches. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got lots and lots and lots of problems inside this room. Like, high-level problems are gonna need to be dealt with. I think we should be able to drop a few of these guys coming down the hallway, which should thin out numbers a little bit. I don't think we're gonna have enough left over to get this big alien in the back, though. So there's a pretty strong chance that we're gonna end up taking a little bit of scuffing going on into this room. The good news is we can get more Marines. I would prefer not to. I would like for these ones to keep getting stronger and, like, developing. But, you know, sometimes things don't go the way that you want. Uh, they did breach through that door right there, which is quite an issue. Oh, they've opted to hold this guy's turn till last, which is actually super smart on the part of the AI, because he's going to have the most TUs to attack when he actually closes that gap. And so if you notice what they did right there, they used every single unit before this guy so that they could maximize the damage they would put out and soak overwatches. Very smart on the AI's turn, like super smart. I, we are all tripped up in the dog leash right now, and I don't know how we're gonna fix this. Adam is gonna have to get some work done here. All right, kill you a bug. I could maybe huck a grenade into the backfield, but it's hard to say. With, like, a full burst, I don't even think I have the range for that right there. Go ahead and reload real quick. Yeah, not a great situation. I would have really preferred for this guy to die. Unfortunately, he don't really want to die. He's kind of, like, hanging in there right now. Uh, do you have anything left? No, you're completely tapped. All right, you. Minigun. For what is the point of a minigun if the minigun is not going to get used. That's the sound that I like to hear, just a real saw like Wee! with a good that. spin up. That's what makes me feel a little bit husky. It looks like we cleared that corner decently well. Uh, we're still sitting on top of 32 more enemies though that we're gonna have to do something about and my terror is kind of mounting right now. It's a little bit worrisome. You pull all the way back down to the end of the hallway. Do I point blank this guy, or do I... Wow, you've got a lot of bleeds. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to heal yourself up, get rid of all them bleeds, and then from there, we're going to dump this guy with a couple of bursts. Your characters do have skills. Uh, they do have kind of like attributes, so they can be medics. Uh, they can be kind of tooled up to be engineers. It's up to you what you want to do with them. However, that stuff is all assigned pre-mission with kind of like a Warhammer 40k style point buy, I guess. At least that's how it did it for me, is that you come in, you have like a squad of six guys, you have like 2,500 points, and every piece of gear that you equip or don't equip has a point cost associated with it. Uh, you come back over here because I think he's going to need some help on this side. Like, I, I don't think he's going to have the oomph to do it by himself. We have one round left. I'm going to say it's best spent on him, maybe. And then we'll reload it. Reporting. You over here. Holding Give position. me a defensive grid right there and just mag dump the hell out of him if he tries to come down the hallway. Tickles, what are you doing right now? Tickles, do you think you have enough? That's, I named him Tickles. All the other guys I didn't set the name on. But I set Tickles' name because I care about Tickles, all right? Tickles is my buddy and I don't want him to die. However, Tickles needs to, like, handle his HP situation. Tickles is kind of beat to hell and back. There we go. Pick, or Tickles is good. Downside is that... Oh, there's a radioactive pool of sludge right there. Goody, goody gumdrops. You're out of APs. You're out of APs. You're out of AP. Everybody's out of APs. I was going to try to heal that bleed right there, but I don't think it's going to happen. Good news is it looks like we're starting to fight our way clear. Most of the missions seem to start out like this. So the enemy in this game seems to bum rush you very early in each mission. They seem to have some kind of sound, some kind of hearing system, some kind of vision system. I don't know. But like we started out on a previous mission, sort of like on the Martian surface and the enemy pushed us very hard like the second we were off the dropship, definitely bringing in kind of that XCOM feeling, I guess, of like, oh, 
were we not gonna overwatch at all? What happened right there, man? Oh, what is that thing? I don't know what that is, but it scares me. So, like, what was up with you, man? How come you didn't, like, overwatch anything? Is there a reason why you I swear to God, I put you on defense mode, man. Now, now I'm a little bit miffed with you. Out of ammo. Ah, that would explain, then. Lovely. Yeah, go ahead and go ahead and give him a little, give him a little bit of that, give him a little bit of that medium caliber love right there. Medium caliber love. That's a song that I'm working on. It's called Medium Caliber Love. Open parentheses, bang bang, close parentheses. I think it's gonna be a big hit, man. I think people are gonna be into it. Uh, what does this guy do? He has a name. Zag, the Shadow Envoy. That's probably not good of all the things that have ever been not good-ish. I, I would say this probably qualifies. Can you hit from right there? No. Like I said, dude, some of these guns have really weird hitboxes. I'm sorry, really, really weird lanes of fire, and you just got to kind of get used to it. Oh, good. A nice timely miss. Exactly what we needed. If you if you have the AP to get out of the way, I would maybe suggest getting out of the way. We are gonna have to dump a lot of magazines into this guy, though. Yeah, I need to break his armor, but I don't know exactly how to do it. Here, I'll swap you. You come over here and handle this bug. I'm gonna I'm gonna trade you one bug for a different bug here. All right, there you go. See, I knew you'd be able to handle this. Thank you, sir. And then just kind of like, yeah, if you could bomb a couple shots on him, that'd be good. But I need this guy to come over here because my sniper rifle breaks armor. And so that's kind of like the situation we're in right now is that I need to shatter this guy's armor like crazy because he has a lot of armor. There we go. So we've, we've shot him a lot of times. Whether or not there was any efficiency to that fire, I think, remains to be seen. But we're doing our best here. Uh, Adam, you've got a little bit left, but honestly, ammo's getting kind of shy right now. I started out with, like, 300 bullets on each guy, and you can kind of guess the amount of gunfire and screaming and running and terrible things that have been transpiring during the course of this mission because you can see here, like, the, the amount of bullets we actually have very, very thin right now. So hopefully, I can't do that. you're already out of AP. In position. Yeah, you are. I may be able to pass off some bullets to somebody later, Stay but for fine. now, I think we're kind of trapped in a situation where this guy needs to get got. So I'm just gonna hope for the best and mag dump him. Man, look at the chin on you. I'm hit. Doesn't even care. Shrugged it off like it wasn't no thing. All right. What about that? Is that going to work? Fire. There we go. Big dog's finally dead. Affirmative. Let's get in here. And I don't know what it's going to take to break this damn thing. Throwing grenade. But a grenade can't be that bad, right? Did it work? Oh, that thing's got some HP to it. Okay, uh, we're going to want somebody that's got some serious ammo left to deal with that. Let's go ahead and pull everybody into that side rim. Dude, he left flames all over the place. So it looks like we got like a Diablo situation going on Roger. where some of the enemies have a fixes and stuff. Very, in my opinion, very intense little strategy game. Like, if you don't come in like ready to rock, you will get choked out with this one. Like, the game has, oh, he's out of ammo entirely. Okay. Doesn't look like I have anybody. I mean, you might be able to split off a magazine for him, I guess. Good news is we only have 28 enemies remaining, so maybe it'll be okay. Maybe everything will work out fine just fine. I don't know. I suppose if we can keep filtering them into this area. Oh, wow, that little guy had, like, a, a mission that he was on. Your characters do have different armor from the front and from the back. 
Uh, so that attack right there did a lot more damage, and when you are loading out your characters, you can make your decision as to what you want them to be equipped with. Uh, you can send them in with full plate carriers, you can send them in with knives, you can send them in with all kinds of fun stuff. Grenade launchers, there's about 50 different engineering tools and a bunch of different medical stuff for various status effects, so your characters are going to get coated by, like, pathogens, acids, all that kind of stuff, and it's all going to need to be dealt with and finished off. Fire. If you can kill that little guy for me, that'd be great. And then what I need from you... is I need you to, like, split off some ammo. Not, like, a huge amount. But then I need you to hand that off to him. And, of course, your characters can also do complex functions like what you saw right there. It takes some getting used to. This game does have some, like, control idiosyncrasies with the left click and, like, what left clicks and what right clicks, what confirms and what denies. It's a little bit jumbled with regards to inputs. So sometimes, like, right click is used. Other times you got to right click then left clicked on somebody. Sometimes you got to like left click then left click. It all does different stuff. You'll get a feel for it eventually. It, it takes a little getting used to though when it comes to like the tactile nature of the game and how it functions. We'll go ahead and take out this first eggy over here and then we'll try to locate. Wait, what happened right there? Why aren't you shooting anymore? Ah, that explains many things. Uh, you should keep shooting at the eggy since you're the only guy with any semblance of ammo efficiency right now. If I have anybody that's got meds or anything else, who's got bandages over here? You got bandages? All right, if you got bandages, go ahead and reload in case we get ourselves into another conflict. And then we got to right click on that guy, left click on him. That should fix up his bleed real fast. I also have a bioactive antitoxin. I don't know what people's poison buildup is right now. So it looks like he's got acid on him. I can't do that. He's out of AP though. He's got bottles of water that he can dump on him to get himself. If he's on fire or covered in acid, he can trickle water on it and get rid of it all. So there are like complexities here. Like I like what the game is playing around with. My only thing about this early access build is that like I'm not super interested in just kind of like playing random missions over and over again. Like I, I was hoping for a campaign. Um, I feel like when it comes to launching an early access, an early access should almost always launch with its progression systems in. Uh, because people want to see stuff like that if they're going to be a prospective buyer, I suppose. Yep. And so, Affirmative. there are progression systems here. Oh, I stepped on acid. Beautiful. How many aliens you figure in this little court? God, he left fire everywhere. There's fire and acid everywhere, bro. There's like magical shadow flames all over the place. I got like one magazine left. This is not good. But the game does, despite the fact that like the campaign is not in here and there is no campaign as of right now, there's just kind of like little two, three mission sprints or the play your own mission type deal. Aside from that, the game does do a really good job at, I think conferring a level of claustrophobia that is usually reserved only for games like Space Hulk. On top of that, it's also a game where it's very, very much easy to like under-prepare for a situation and get wiped out on the point because you're running out of ammo like I did right here. Oh, you can close and seal that hatch, huh? Yeah, we should probably do that then. Bugs come up out of the hatches, from what I recall. So we'll go ahead and close that off. I don't remember. I played through the tutorial, but it was kind of in a haze. I was listening to music. I was doing my vibe, you know what I mean? And so I don't know if I should split into separate teams. Yeah, pretty much everyone here is Hitman. I feel I feel like if we start splitting hairs, being like, I'm hit, he's hit, she's hit, we're hit, uh, I think it's just safe to assume for right now that we are all hit, we are all bleeding, and we are all feeling terrible. Oh, that's a dead end. Beautiful. Yes, Okay, that solves me a little bit of stress yes, then. Sir. Let's have everybody push down this way. I will leave my sniper back in that other area to kind of like deal with you. other crises and kill off the egg Recording. since he's got effectively infinite ammo efficiency. Somebody does need to check over here. But I don't think there's any like super good way to get around it. Pressurized barrel. Common barrel. Hydrazine barrel. 
Can you hit the hydrazine barrel? You can. Sort of. Maybe. Well, I was going to blow the hydrazine barrel, but I guess it doesn't want me to. When it comes to loading out characters, I figure we're kind of at the point of the video right now where I should go back and show you. Uh oh. Hey, it's a good thing I set up an overwatch. Are they tunneling through the wall? I didn't even know they could do that. I just learned a new thing today. I guess the wall does have varying states of degradation. You can see it right there. So that means they can actually come through the walls, man. The walls. Oh, apparently they don't get affected by the shadow flames either. Oh boy, we're making all kinds of little fun time friends down here, aren't we? Yeah, there's all kinds of little furry and scaly beasties and baddies running around. Oh wow. Okay. I would say I'm a little tiny bit concerned about my safety right now. This this is feeling like a situation where maybe command should have prepared us for this or something. Right. You know, maybe maybe command should have been like, hey dude, bad things are gonna happen. What happens if I shoot that hydrazine barrel? Yeah, that worked. Like the lighting effects that it lit off too. I didn't know there was lighting effects either until I caught everything on fire. And now that I've caught everything on fire, well, I guess there's some purple lighting effects and some green around there. It oh no 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 no! Turn your friendly fire. That no need for that. Everything is fine. I know we're a little stressed. Everybody's a little tense, but there's no need for that kind of fun time. Let's not let's not get too wild and crazy out here. Uh, big miss right there at a at a bad time. A miss and a graze. Both at equally terrible times. Not good. Um, I don't have a lot of people in position to assist with the situation that is currently unfolding down here. But I suppose I'll send Tickles that way. And maybe he can, like, I don't know, huck a grenade in here or something? Yeah, I mean, it's something. He, he did a thing. Nice job, Tickles. Feel free to retire back to where you're going. Uh... Mercy, probably going to need you back over here, too, if you could get your Overwatch ass back down and down this hallway. And just sort of, like, let the enemy know that, like, hey, you're all on notice. All right, one Eggy down. A singular Eggy has been defeated. And now I can actually... Ooh, there's a door over that way, too. Flank around. Oh no, there's not a door over that way, dude. It looked like there was a door panel right there from the shadow, so I thought there was a door panel. Alright, well, that's unfortunate. We'll figure it out, though. But let me show you, let me show you some of the customization options here. Alright, so with the customization options, if you wanted to, you can play a single mission right now. These missions confer various rewards. I haven't really been able to verify if those rewards are actively working right now or if they do anything. The game does seem to track them up inside of here. And then, of course, you will have all of your guys. They have been loaded out already. You can save and you can load different presets for all of your Marines, uh, just in case you don't want to go through the fiddly diddly of putting them all back together. But every character is comprised of two panels. You got your status down here, which has HP. It's got morale. Uh, you've also got all of your random resistances, and you've got how much it's built up with the big number on the right. In general, you want the number on the right to be zero, otherwise bad things happen at the beginning of your turn. These are your character's skills. Uh, you can take a look at that, actually. And with your character's skills, it looks like there's like eight of them right now. They go from level zero to five. Uh, you can push them on up. And then once they've been pushed up, you set them as primaries and secondaries, which will then confer if you look to over here. So let's say that I take this agility and I call it a primary, that part that just went green. If you set an ability or a attribute as your primary or your secondary, you get fat bonuses out of it to like movement, for example, or like marksmanship. Secondary specialization makes it so that you reload and unload weapons faster. When it comes to your primary specialization with marksmen, if you had gone for that, you would get a bunch of extra crit. Uh, with heavy weapons, it kind of does the same thing, except that it makes you always damage armor more if you set it as a primary. Field expertise is your ability to hand things to other characters, pick things up off the ground, secure objectives. Uh, little things like vaulting. 
jumping over stuff, I think, for field expertise. Basically, it's like your general dexterity for interacting with things. Electrotechnics is your ability to weld doors, killing floor style, and to get doors open. You can also hack things in this game, although in the mission we just played, there wasn't really any hacking nodes. I do have hacking tools on this guy, both consumable ones and professional grade ones. As far as weapons that you start out with go, you've got knives, you've got assault rifles, you've got grenade launchers, explosives, mines, all that kind of fun stuff, riot shields, uh, but there's also more things that unlock, and so go to the respective game setup screen, yeah, so there, there are things to unlock, so there is, I guess, progression of a sort. Uh, so if we go back and we take a look at the operations, you can see here that the operations mode will unlock uh, a lot of the more specialized awesome tools that you don't have access with at the start, things like gas masks, uh, specialized types of bullets that are armor piercing. You may have noticed that we had to shoot the xenomorphs a lot in order to kill them. That's because we have not unlocked AP rounds, we have not unlocked incendiary and explosive rounds and stuff like that. It just takes time. Uh, you know, for what the game is right now, I think it's a really, really cool idea. I think the early access is compelling. I would only jump into the early access, though, if you're okay with just playing procedural missions over and over and over again. Uh, because the campaign mode is not in yet, which is the thing that has me the most excited. Like, that's the thing that I want to do, where you can take missions and, like, sandbox missions, and every time you do, you get more requisition, and you can use that requisition to buy new guns and upgrade things and, you know, level up your guys. Uh, can't really super do that right now. You can, but it's all kind of, like, pre-mission, I guess. And so that's what I would keep in mind. I haven't really noticed... I haven't really noticed if this right here goes upwards as time goes along, like as you're playing the randomized missions, like you have a count-wide squad requisition. I don't think so, though, because I've completed a mission or two and the number still seems to be the same as far as my memory is functioning. So, yeah, a little disappointed that they didn't start with the campaign and then add all the sandboxy procedural modes afterwards. Every single time for you to play through over and over, you will unlock some gear the first couple times you do it, and then you will just kind of repeatedly play random missions until more content comes out. I noticed that the maps don't seem to have a huge amount of interesting set pieces to them, uh, so it's mostly just like clutter and hallways and things like that. I do think that the maps could use a big dose of personality that randomly shows up here and there uh, that will define the map and the way that it plays. So if you look at a game like Nemesis Lockdown, for example, that game has rooms that have specific uses and they don't all always show up in every single mission, but they have mission-defining functions that dictate the way all players play the second you realize that those rooms are in play during this mission effectively. Uh, customization, I think, is a high point with this game. It seems like there's going to be a lot of things to fiddle with. However, until you start unlocking things, there's not a huge amount of things to play with yet. I am looking forward to checking this game out when they get the campaign in, as that's what I'm focused on. For now, for me, it's an interesting diversion. It wore out its welcome pretty quickly. Like, I think I'd probably play, like, three or four missions and then be good. Uh, because I'm the kind of person that is progression focused and reward focused and character progression focused, narrative focused. So I want like a full campaign where I capture like pieces of the planet and use those resources to resource, like, research and manufacture new things. That's not here right now, so it's not going to hold my attention long term. The game does have some weird UI elements. Left click, right click takes some getting used to for item manipulation. So definitely play the tutorial before you dive into the larger mission sets. And then on top of that, I would say that if you are the kind of player that dislikes timers on your missions, this is bald-facedly not the game for you. Uh, like, a lot of the missions are on timers here. Uh, my name is Flattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, USC Counterforce. Tomorrow, something else. Thanks for hanging out, and that's it.